Hello, everybody, and welcome to the January 16th Trips and Traps. Andy Serling, joined by Eric Donovan. We have five races to bring you from this week, uh, all races from uh, two sets of different days. You have uh, a, few, a few races we'll show you from January 10th, and a few races we'll show you from January 12th, both very different racetracks on those days. Yeah, really a fascinating week of racing, and this is a week of racing before we get into the races that I really implore people to watch the races, especially really all of them, because Thursday was a bit inside-y, Friday was a very much an inside track, and we're going to go through three races from that day. We'll show two races from Saturday, uh, s Sunday. We had only the one race on Saturday, and then the, we didn't show any race from Monday, but we had opposite tracks because the inside, very right on the inside, very questionable on both Sunday and Monday. And these are the kind of days, and this is the kind of week that if you mine horses out of those week, there's a lot of money to be made, but you have to do the work. And we did have uh, you know, a weather situation uh, during the middle of the week with that fog and warmer temperatures on Saturday, which very well could have changed the track around a little bit. Oh, I'm sure that's the case, because I don't really think that Glenn and his crew are doing anything mm -hmm. particularly differently, and sometimes the track is just kind of goofy, and I think this track will tilt towards the inside, and they do a very good job of keeping it even, but it just seemed like something weird happened, and there were definitely some interesting races on Sunday especially, but even on Monday, and there's going to be some interesting stuff coming out of it. Very much looking forward to seeing a lot of horses run back from all four of those cards. All right, well, let's take a look at some races from Friday now. We'll start off with the second race of Maiden Special Weight for three-year-olds going a mile on the 16th. This could be a very important race going forward with the winner, Barati, looking at some important stakes here over the winter. I agree. The first thing is that the people who are falling for the one, Barati, who may turn out to be a decent horse, we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about the five All My Memories, as well as the six horse who's behind him, those Rapoli silks. We'll talk about him, but Barati's a horse that's getting a lot of talk right now, and um, he got a 95 buyer, 92 buyer. He did it while galloping along on the goldest of gold rails. The six horse, good news is no news, who finishes second. He's He actually is on the rail for almost the entire race, whereas the five, all my memories, he's the one that we're the most interested in betting back. Yeah, he sends up uh, three wide here around the first turn, a horse that was trying around a ground for the first time all three of his prior races had been at seven furlongs here, but he's up against it already in the early stages of this race here, going three wide as they approach the three-quarter pole. Yeah, there he is, the one of course in the lead and good news is no news or what good news is no news yes that horse is down the rail and he's going to get the absolute best of trips best of rides by Arad Ortiz Mike Luzzi's just done that I mean this is just this is the place to be man when mm -hmm. the rail is good here that rail will just carry you along we're not saying Barati's not talented he may be but you didn't learn from this race that he's some sort of extra talented horse what you want from this race and whether it's the five all my memories or even other horses that chased outside you want horses that were on the outside the horses that ran one, two, three here, spent almost the entire race on the rail as the third finisher. He's not even the picture, and he's on the rail. And that's a gold eagle, the, a rare eagle, rather, the third place finisher in uh, copper and uh, black silks, who is, as you said, not on the picture yet, but uh, the second place finisher. Good news is no news in the fifth down on the rail there. The winner, Barati, obviously, on the rail, and three wide still plug it away on the outside. There's the five all my memories. Yeah, I mean, the first thing is that good news is no news. I, I want no part of him going forward. He's okay. He's at his chances, but he'll be really dressed up by riding the rail here, the ones there. Now, Barati Barati is what he is, and we'll analyze him when he runs in the stake, in all likelihood he'll be over his head and over bet. Um, we'll see. He's a young horse. He could improve, but he was helped by the racetrack. The interesting horse to talk about is all my memories, who ends up finishing six in this race, beating about 15 lengths. I'm not sure that six isn't too short in the inner, and I don't think it's fair for either one of us to say he doesn't want to go long. I just don't think he had any prayer with the trip he got. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, he does, you know, fold up the fold up his ten pretty well here. I mean, he's beaten uh, fourteen and three quarter lengths, it. but all this could be magnified by, you know, that strong inside. So, you know, it's a, you know, a question to him. You know, do you come back with him with confidence if he's going long again? If he's backing up to six furlongs, do you need a little bit of a pace in front of him? Could he end up in a field where, you know, as we wake work our way through the winter, where he's just simply better than most of the horses he's going to be running against? Well, we'll too. See, it's a pretty good field besides Marathi. I mean, you know, he's just a horse that's going to look a lot worse than he is. And what happens with these goals? rails is you have this sort of blowout effect where the horses that stayed on the inside, in this case the one, two, three finishers, all ran seemingly better than maybe they're capable of running in an mm -hmm. even situation, and the horses that had the outside chasing trips, especially all my memories, they look worse, so it really expands, and this is a perfect example, six lengths from first to second, four and a quarter from second to third, two plus from third to fourth, it just blows everything mm -hmm. out, and it makes these horses look so much better than they are, and so much worse than they are, and that's how you make money. And we did see margins similar to this throughout the day, and horses that took advantage uh, of the inside, so a very interesting uh, second race from January 10th, one, you definitely 
definitely want to keep going to keep tabs on as uh, we move forward here. All right, the uh, second race in this episode of Trips and Traps, the sixth race from a uh, Friday maiden claiming race for uh, three-year-old fillies, New York Reds, uh, 25,000 tags here. Once again, we want horses with outside trips. You know, the four breaks on top, and this was a case where it was early in the rail, but if a Rod Ortiz had dropped him over the fence, you wonder what could have happened because he ends up in a three-wide chase. The first time star of the eight, that's no limit. Breaking outside, he ends up on a chase outside the entire way as well, Eric. Yeah, uh, both horses, I think, up against it. I think going forward, that's no limit would be the one I might want a little bit more, but that's Great. open for discussion here. Uh, as we see the nine, let me rock drop over to the inside. The eight, uh, that's no limit on the chase uh, on the outside. The eventual winner in the race, a first-time starter, 40 to 1 odds, sitting in that pocket third down on the rail. Yeah, kind of a tactical error by, by Jose Ortiz on Lemmy Rock, who comes off the rail and allows this long shot first time starter actually Andromeda's Risk, another horse that rode the gold rail and rode it to a massive victory almost five lengths at 41 to 1, showing how strong that rail was. I tend to agree with you, Eric. While she's a sizzler, chase three wide, and I, I would definitely give her a chance going forward. That's no limit. That was the horse who was chasing all the way on the outside, but also fighting for the lead the whole way. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you know, I think a big difference in experience, difference in experience, and what was going on in this race for both horses. That's no limit. Was a first-time starter for the Mike Hushin Bar in the four. She's a sizzler, getting a big, uh, you know, trainer switch first off the claim here for uh, Rudy Rodriguez, a horse with some experience and some back races in the past too. So going forward, I'd prefer the horse with the, the lesser experience and the horse that did a little bit more running early on. There. But I think you can even see it with she's a sizzler. It's almost like she's running in place at this mm -hmm. point, you know because it, at that point, it, 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 it's... It it's like if you have that outside trip, it's very hard to gain ground even, whereas the rail is catapulting horses upward. It's not the case with a horse like that who, who, who's chasing outside. And I think once again, you want to look for horses in races that were chasing on the outside, whether they were chasing the pace, they were trying to close on the outside. These are the horses you want going forward, and you really want to downgrade horses that were elevated by being on the rail. All right, one well, more race to bring you from Friday. This is the eighth race, an allowance optional claimer for fillies and mares, two other than allowance mile and 70 yards distance here. Let's take a look at the three sister state and Flores Island, the number six horse who endure wide trips here early on. Yeah, we're going to roll them into the first turn so we can set all the horses up. And this is one where Love Contract was 67 to 1 and had no real chance on paper. Took advantage of the rail and elevator performance. I think that's an important thing to notice. You've got her down in front in the rail. Out here, you've got Sister State who, because of an unaggressive ride, hung out in the middle of the track. The six horse, the eventual winner, Flores Island, that horse was caught outside. Flores Island and wins this race, I want this horse moving way up next time because she is a horse that's ready to take a step forward. And the eventual fourth place finisher, that's the eighth, the best option. A terrific ride by Escobar, getting this horse all the way to the inside, but really all she did was take advantage of sucking up inside. The horses, to me, you want, you want the winner out of this race moving up because she's a lot better than she looks on paper. And Sister State's another horse. And Rod Ortiz has a chance with her to clear. He's restraining her three wide. Now, I understand it was second day of the gold rail, but these riders, they They've got to be paying attention to this track because when it gets speed favoring, you have got to adjust your game. And he has a chance to clear with her, Eric, and he makes no attempt to do that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he thought maybe they were going a little quick early on, that if he did clear, he'd, you know, burn, he's burn him up too much a little bit there. Horse. Yeah, he's strangling there. I mean, the, the, the fractions were 23 and 348 flat, though. I don't know how much faster you really could have gone and expect to have something track. left. It was, it was a fast. fast. Well, yeah. the final time was 141 and 3. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, it's a pretty fast track. I'm not, I hear what you're saying, but sh you're better off letting your horse run. On the other hand, it's an inside track, and that's the reason. Sister State's horse, I like her, and I'd give her another chance out of here, but I come out of this race particularly impressed by the winner of Flores Island, who's the only horse that was able to do what she's done so successfully, save the eighth winner on uh, on Thursday's races. And here's the eight moving up the inside. Great ride by May Escobar. Yeah, I mean, you see the saving all the ground there on that long shot, the best option toward the back of the pack. But Flores Island with that wide trip throughout, still going on with it here. Those sister states starts to tire a little bit. Flores Island, uh, you know, looks like she's going to have her hands full trying to run down Love Contract. That big stretch out at uh, 67 to 1. Looks like Love Contract's going to pull away and win here. Finally, the uh, class, I guess, of Flores Island just uh, grinds her down the experience going along as well. But the uh, third place, or the eventual second place finisher, rather, I like Candy, spent a lot of the time uh, down toward the inside as well. A super effort here, I thought, from uh, from. Flores Island, too. All the other horses that were second, third, and fourth were saving ground there most no, of the way. No, an exceptional effort by a horse that won by three quarters, and I don't think that people will appreciate how terrific that effort was. And you have a horse like Love Contract. I think that's what you look for when you talk about gold rails. Mm -hmm. Horses like that 
the first time starter the big winner at 40 to 1 well it was a first time starter perhaps the horse can run a little bit but when you get a horse like Love Contract is able to run as well as she did seemingly a winner 67 to 1 and you look at her PPs the rail was the reason and when you look at that then take another look at that that second race that we showed and try to put it all together and realize why it's dressing those horses up yep uh, good points there and now we'll uh, get the opposite uh, spectrum of it from uh, Sunday's races we'll take a look at the sixth race now back to back races actually we'll do the sixth and the seventh but the sixth and maiden special weight for New York Red Phillies and Mares going six furlongs I think it's official Eric I think Rock and Cozy has won the award <laughs> there no horse has been on trips and traps and justifiably so more than Rock and Cozy and still a maiden the 12 horse who runs very well to be second River Est ends up stumbling at the start and dropping back after that River Cozy gets left but now we've gotten to Sunday's card and right down the rail is not the place to be and guess what despite where she could have been that's where poor Rock and Cozy ended up. Yep, she gets uh, well, a little bit off the rail here, but they'll be angled down toward the rail more uh, throughout the running of the backstretch here, down toward the inside. Obviously, you can't miss her with that uh, gray, almost white uh, color of hers. And on the outside, you see the, uh, four, uh, the 12, rather, uh, River Est uh, chasing. Uh, but the race turns out to be fairly contentious up on the front end. It did. Now, keep in mind, the winner of the four, Shea Darby, is down towards the inside. There's the 12, and you can see Rockin' Cozy, the white horse. What happens here is she's in the three path. As she clears those horses inside, <clears throat> her rider, Manny Franco, ends up ducking down right in the rail, and he's over interested in being on the inside. He puts her down there to the detriment of her chances, even at a fair track, because keep in mind, Shay Darby's on the inside, but she's not right on the rail. She's actually close to the two path, and that's what Manny Escobel sees, and he thinks he's gonna come inside of her. Well, she's not really far enough off for him to get through on the inside, as there's River Est, there's on the inside Rock and Cozy. Also, Rock and Cozy's a little chicken to go through there, and right on the rail is a very, very bad place to be two late days later. Uh, the two horses in front, they run away from her probably rock and cozy is Eric she's gonna come back in an easier spot she'll get a perfect trip and she's gonna hang to somebody well that's why uh, she's uh, 0 for 20 with uh, now uh, 12, nine excuses. Uh, 12 in the money finishes and, <laughs> and, and nine I appearances on trips and traps yeah, nine I could be more than that actually <laughs> by, by now uh, the six-year-old mayor maybe she'll get lucky one day and uh, get through this uh, condition maybe they'll decide to drop her in for a tag uh, they've been pretty insistent on running her in special weight races she's probably because yeah well, they've seen her on trips and traps so much what's gonna happen with rock and cozy is she's gonna win a race finally and then she'll win two more after that because mm -hmm. she'll say hey you know, this winning thing isn't that bad. But made no mistake, she had a tough trip here, and she's also worse than got glued down right in the rail. And these are tricky days. I think it was even a little more outsidey when we looked at some of the races on, on Monday's card. Mm -hmm. It's tough. I'm not, I can't guarantee you it was a dead rail because we had that blowout winner and a horse was right down towards the inside. Shadar was in the two path, but I'm looking back and I'm thinking about Saratoga over 10 years ago. There was a period of time, I think it was 1999, where right on the rail was dead for about a week and a half, two weeks, and the two path was fine. Maybe that was the case on Sunday and Monday, and it takes a lot of hard work to get there. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's hard to believe that sometimes you can move two feet outside and, and have a totally different racetrack. Yeah, it just does seem like that was possibly the case. I'll say one thing. It was a very different track than we saw on no Friday question. and even Thursday, and that's what's so interesting about last week. No question about it. All right, one more race, the final race on this episode of Trips and Traps. is the seventh from Sunday, 12-5, uh, three lifetime claimer for four-year-olds and upgoing six. Yeah, uh, I don't think little Wyatt was winning, but little Wyatt could have benefited from some better choices by the, maybe by the rider here. And once again, it's trying to stay down towards the inside and maybe even thinking about Thursday and Friday's track, but it was a different track here and he ends up getting jammed up. Uh, the five in here, Cactus City Road, I, 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 I like aggression. This was a case where it ended up hurting the horse's chances. Yeah, I mean, this is a horse that uh, is perfectly capable of sitting a couple lengths off the pace. And if you'd looked at, you know, his last couple races, you would probably figure you know, he'd be sitting in, in fifth or sixth year instead of vying for the lead uh, down toward the inside, which is another reason why I like him here. Not only was he inside, but he was doing something that, you know, he really didn't have to be doing, vying down inside, and the pace did totally collapse. Well, this race was a total meltdown. I mean, you see the winner is moving back here, and it was back and last the second place finisher a long shots moving there I mean this race was a complete and total meltdown so the five cactus city road is down in the inside dueling as you say against what he wants to do little Wyatt now he could have that chance to get out and go around and instead of being more aggressive he held the horse in and now he gets caught behind horses and he dives down to the dead rail and the other horses have cleared now little Wyatt I don't know how good he is and he was in the process of getting a good trip and he was in a spot but 
I think decision-making cost him his best chance to get a little bigger piece. Would that be fair, Eric? Um, yeah, I mean, what did he finish? Uh, fourth year? He fourth. could have been third, I he guess. Would have been I don't, third. I don't think I don't he would have been second. Been second. Yeah. He certainly would have been third in here. And, you know, it, it's tough because you're in that spot. But I think in general, unless you've got a gold rail, you got to get outside mm -hmm. in the clear. And you, you got to let the horses go. It's not, you don't have to eat dirt behind them. I don't know. Easier for us to watch them to be out riding them. Yeah, I think uh, well, we all benefit by seeing what's going on, you know, all around the horses. Whereas when you're on, you know, if you're on the horse's back, it's not quite as easy to tell what's coming up on, alongside of you and how the pace is going in front of you. Yeah, and the other thing is, it doesn't really matter. You know, you don't, you're playing the blame game is a waste of time, mm -hmm. whether it's blaming yourself or blaming others. The point is, what can we learn from these races going forward? And there is no doubt that last week, the week that encompasses the 9th, the 10th, the 12th, and the 13th, is going to be a gold mine of horses off of trips, horses that will not be obvious because dead rails and gold rails, they're not obvious when you look at speed figures and you look mm -hmm. at final finish. You do the work on these cards and you look at some of these races as guides, but you do them all and you're going to find some horses to make some money with. Horses are going to pay prices that they shouldn't be paying. No question about it. Looking forward to seeing uh, these horses run back, especially, you know, a horse like Barati uh, running back in some three-year-old stakes later on. No, I agree. And he's a horse going to get a lot of hype. Maybe he's a good horse, but he's going to have to run better than he did the other day. Once again, we can always use your help. It's trips and traps at NairaInc.com. Thanks for watching.